Man, I think I just had a mini heart attack. I just paid $115 for this bottle of Safari 20 SG insecticide. It's only 12 ounces. Don't let the bottle deceive you. It's only up to here. <laughs> this part is nothing but air to make you feel like you're getting more than what you paid for. But I think I am hopeful that this stuff is going to save my ass bins in the yard. So here's the deal. The Utah State University Extension and Utah Plant Pest Diagnostic Laboratory has got this PDF out. I'll put a link up in the description for you. This is the best information to date that I have found on the oyster shell scale. They also call it muscle scale, M-U-S-S-E-L. This is the only thing listed in here uh, that has the active ingredient dinotefurin. It's a systemic, which means the plants suck it up, which means you don't have to actually hit the crawlers, you don't have to hit the shell, the scale, whatever. Uh, it might be borderline too late for me to get these into my trees for this season, 2019. Today is the July, shit, I don't know what it is. Every day is Saturday to me. And I think today's Saturday for you too. <laughs> well, another good thing that's good about this PDF that the State University Extension has put out is they've got what they call Utah Traps website. It's a climate trap for accurate information for your area. You go to the website uh, and bottom line is you find your uh, zip code and then you click on uh, the uh, weather channel and you click submit and it tells you when you should start seeing the crawlers. So I did all that and mine came up with 626, which was a little bit over almost a month ago. But uh, because of the weather, my elevation, uh, I did find crawlers on one tree, but I don't know what tree it was. I can't find out what it was because with my eyes being my age i cannot see that well uh, but my iphone picked up the uh, crawlers so as of two days ago on one tree somewhere's in here they were active now i don't know if i'm catching the late crawlers or if this is the first of the crawlers but i mean it's going to be close to 90 degrees here in park city in a couple of hours and I really want to get this put out. I'm going to do the soil drench method. Uh, so basically I'm going to get this mixed up somehow. I got to read off. It's sealed very good. Uh, shipping was very fast. It was uh, fulfilled by Amazon but shipped by someone else I believe. Besides the Scale being deadly to the trees. I think this stuff is deadly to the applicator. So you got to wear personal protection equipment uh, Cover your cover yourself up and then get in the shower immediately after spraying, but I'm not gonna be spraying up high It's not that windy. I'm gonna be spraying down low. I'm gonna be soaking the soil So I'm a little bit less concerned about the environment environmental uh, personal protection aspects of this but I do have to let my neighbors uh, know because uh, they've asked me to let them know when I spray shit because of their uh, dog. They're really concerned about their dog. So let me get reading on this. Uh, Y'all don't need to watch me read this and uh, I will be back and let you know how all this goes. All right, so one more thing. 
since I did mention that I might be borderline too late for putting this out uh, I've got a lot of damage on my trees and I don't expect this to repair the damage to my trees I do hope that this will stop any further damage but most importantly I'm putting this on now and then I will put this on in the er, late spring early summer next year uh, at the proper time but what I'm thinking now is I've got so much damage I want to get this in the ground so that the new seedlings or sprouts or whatever we call the new aspens coming up that they will be resistant to the scale so aspens grow fast they die fast they come up fast and uh that's really what i'm hoping for is the uh i guess you call it a propagation uh of new plants but here's my deal i think most of these instructions are kind of set up for the professional guy that's got a you know 40 gallon tank of water on their truck uh, that they're spraying with and I'm gonna do a hose in sprayer so I gotta figure out some hard math on this and it's too hot out here so I'm gonna go inside where I got a calculator okay I told you it was gonna be tough math trying to uh, convert all of that stuff uh, to a hose-in sprayer. That's what I was hoping I was going to do. I was hoping I was going to do a uh, soil drench method and figure out an application rate and then just, you know, and then just sit there and spray it on the uh, trunk of the tree and the bottom of it. I found a good link. It was like a hemlock helpline and a woman named Donna, she answered her phone on a Saturday. I guess it's her personal phone. She's a tree hugger. Bless her heart, I love her. She gave me some really good advice and she gave me some really good uh, measurements. Long story short, the 12 ounces I got is only going to make 110 ounces. It's not even a gallon. The other thing is that I need to spray the trunks at an application rate of one ounce per diameter. And you're supposed to spray the trunk of the tree no higher than four and a half feet up. Well, I measured, guess where four and a half feet comes to? <laughs> Somewhere's right around here bottom of my beard, so that's gonna be easy to do. The other thing I'm gonna do is, since I don't have enough to do all 130 of my trees, I'm gonna mark every tree that I do so I can monitor it. Uh, and then I'm gonna have to order more shit. So she also said, so, so she also said to make a tight spray from the sprayer when you're like two inches from the tree that you're only getting an inch of spray. So I got to figure all that out and then I need to figure out on a timing basis just so when I'm spraying it what an ounce what an ounce is. So I've got my roundup thing there. And I think the last thing I was spraying out of this was roundup so we're going to make sure all of that is plenty gone. So I need to figure out an ounce and how much that is and uh, kind of get a timing basis for me. I know that's a gallon right there. So I think a gallon's 128 ounces, I believe. And I can only make 110, so I'm gonna make it just... I'm gonna be close, I'm gonna be close enough uh, to where it's not gonna matter. All right, so let's see what... Let's get my, let's adjust my spray to what Donna suggested. And I'll probably even send her a link to this video since she helped out. Okay, two inches from the tree, not a lot of overspray.
Let's try that. Let's see what an inch. Okay, and let's time this. One, two, wow. Wow, two seconds. Two seconds per inch. That gives me an ounce per inch. Let's try that again. One, two. Uh. No, I think I can go a little bit more. One, two, three. That's it. That, that is my deal. I need three seconds per inch of diameter. Three seconds per inch of diameter. Remember, every day Saturday for me. Today just happens to be Saturday for you too. Uh, but Donna said to mix the stuff up in a container that you can shake up. And she was being very specific about making sure it's exactly 110 ounces. So I'm gonna sacrifice this one gallon water bottle, which I, I reuse for camping. Y'all have seen my other videos. Uh, I refill this with my reverse osmosis water, but I will buy a new gallon container. So we need to get 110 ounces of warm water and put it in here and then put the, and then put the poison in it. Hey Siri, how many ounces are in two cups of water? The answer is 16 fluid ounces. <laughs> Duh, I knew that. 110 oh, divided by 16 is equal to 6.875 two cups. That's it. We're close enough. I'm not much over and I'm not much under. All right. Now, while I go put personal protection equipment on, I'm gonna leave this in the hot sun to stay warm. We're gonna mix that shit up. The poison in that, pour it in here. And then we're gonna start spraying some trees. Let's suit up, let's get some personal protection equipment on. The wind just kicked up, I don't want wind, but we're gonna do this anyways because I'm racing against the clock. Okay, I forgot to turn the uh, camera on, but what I did was I readjusted the flow rate on here to give me five seconds per inch. A little bit finer of a mist. Jesse and Walter White, look out, here I come. Now Donna said, mix this up, you shake it vigorously until it all dissolves and goes clear. I've already got everything laid out inside. As soon as I'm done spraying, I'm going to rinse off and spray off my uh, tools. I'm going inside and I'm stripping in the laundry room, putting all my shit right here in the uh, in the washing machine. And then I'm jumping right into a hot shower for quite a while. Because I, I don't have enough to get all of my trees 
I'm going to be very selective. In the front here, I'm probably only going to do two of those big trees. And then I'm going to work my way around and try to spray the trees that I think are actually going to be, how do you say, savable. Ooh, it is getting clear. I can see it. It is. It's got some bubbly stuff going on, but the stuff inside is clear. Or it's clearing up. That's four inches, so that's 20 seconds. So it's going to be a quick kind of up and down like that around the trunks and well you'll see I'm, I'm gonna let you I'm gonna shoot video of me at least spraying some of these trees over here okay I don't know if you can see that but this is clear now comes the danger As expensive as this is, I'm going to let this uh, drip for a little bit. Okay. All right. Five seconds per inch. I'm going to call that four inches, so it's 20 seconds. Actually, at this rate, I'm not even counting. I'm just kind of lightly soaking or covering the tree on all of the sides. Because this stuff is running off pretty good. So if this is the case, I might be able to get a lot of a lot of the trees. And I'm getting a lot of runoff on here. So I'm going to try to make this adjust the sprayer even tighter so it doesn't put off as much. And then uh, I'm just going to start doing trees. I think I, uh, well, I mean, I'm out, I'm out of product. So a couple of things changed uh, at that nozzle setting that I first had this set on where I was getting five seconds of product per inch. It was actually coming out a little bit too fast for me and I felt like I was getting too much runoff uh, being being waste. And remember this was a hundred and fifteen dollars for a gallon. Uh, and so I, I choked up on the nozzle and the pressure to get a finer mist. And what I ended up doing was that gave me enough low pressure and volume coming out to where I could coat the trunk of the tree from chin height. I don't want to touch anything. Uh, from chin height down 
all the way around the tree. So the smaller one inch, two inch trees didn't take as much and the larger ones took more to do that. That was my solution. I mean, this is not scientific. This is a, uh, this is definitely do it yourself. Uh, a do it yourself attempt. But here's where I'm going with with this. By me being, that's the trunk of the tree right here to it, and spraying it and soaking it all the way around, I promise you, guarantee to you, <laughs> I'm putting more product on the trees than Buck from Greenleaf or Tim from Park City Trees because I've seen them come by and spray and this is what they do. They got their wand sprayer and they can do this. That tree's done. Next tree. And they're spraying all the way up. Now I don't know what product they're, they're, they're spraying but being that they're spraying all the way to the top of the trees, it doesn't sound like it's a systemic and they're not fully covering the trees. So that's why I think that my method here, thanks to Donna, uh, is going to work better and be more efficient. So I'm welcome to your comments. I'm going to forward this to Donna, so if Donna wishes to uh, leave comments on here, uh, please do Donna. So I'm pretty happy with what I got. We'll, we'll have to wait. Uh, next year and earlier in late June, middle June or whatever, by early June. I'm gonna do this again with another $115 gallon of product. I was able to spray and soak the trunks of my big trees. I got the most damage right here in front that, God, I would love to save those the most, but I got very low expectations for that, so I cannot be disappointed if it doesn't work, because I'm not expecting it. All right, I'm going to go, look at that, look at all that sweat, that, that is not water in the gloves, that is a sweat of my hands. All right, so time to run inside and hop in the shower. And uh, then I'll wrap this up inside in the shade. Man, that shower sure did feel good. Uh, okay, let's wrap up this rodeo, okay? Uh, I've sprayed the majority of my aspen trees with the Safari 20SG. All of the links that I've got, I'm sharing with you. Again, I cannot put enough emphasis on this Oyster Shell Scale Utah Pest Facts Sheet from the Utah State University Extension and Utah Public Pest Diagnostic Laboratory. Read it. Even if you're not in Utah, there's useful information on here and cut because of the noise. The best thing on here is that link that takes you to another website to find out your zip code and when you should start seeing uh, the crawlers the, or the action based on your time zone and temperate. And I think it covers the whole United States if I remember right. So that's just a baseline for you to go off. You still need to be your own judge. Now all of this came about basically over the last two or three days. Uh, when I found this, I read it, I ordered the safari, I found crawlers on that one tree. Here's a picture of the crawlers uh, that I found. And uh, at that time, I also uh, hit the trees that were closest to my deck 
uh, with the horticulture spray because I can get up here and spray up high in the trees. Uh, so I kind of got a little, both things going on, fingers crossed, uh, if that's going to help. Safari being a systemic is going to be your most efficient application because the horticulture spray, you've got to time it right. You've got to physically hit the crawlers when they're crawling. Now that I know more and I've got my safari cut, I don't get people driving a Harley with stock mufflers. It sounds like a gold wing. Anyways, I digress. Another thing, when your trees get the scale on there, it's easy to remove them once they're dead. So in here on page three, I believe, page three, they got a picture showing someone with a Brillo pad, scotch pad scrubbing the tree to get rid of the, to get rid of the scale. Do not do that. You're going to damage the bark on an, on an aspen. You can get your garden hose with a hose in sprayer, put it on the jet nozzle, and you can hit that, and that's going to knock off the dead ones. But the, again, that's only cosmetic. You're killing the dead shells, and the crawlers, and the eggs, and the babies. Uh, have already been released and they're, you know, sucking the life out of your tree somewhere else. The last thing I got for you, and this applies whether you are pre-spraying, post-spraying, just monitoring your trees. How do you know if these treatments are working, right? Whether it's a horticulture spray or whether it's the safari. You got to get out on the new growth of the new twigs, of the new branches, and look for scale. We know it's not, we know it's working when there's no bugs on that new growth. Anything you see on existing growth before today, it's just, we call it infestation from before today. So what we want, we want to see new growth, like on my aspens right out here that are still somewhat healthy. I've got about that much of new growth I can see from here. And it's got little itty bitty leaves on it. And down below it, it's got the bigger leaves, which came out either earlier this year in the spring. Uh, yeah, well, that's when it came out, duh. <laughs> but the new growth is still coming out and the leaves are still growing. So that's what you need to get your hands on to check to see if this is working. Okay, that's all I got for now. Hit the subscribe. That's, I think you click on my mug right over there. That'll subscribe you, hit thumbs up, hit notifications, and leave comments. One guy in Colorado commented that he had like a dozen aspen trees in his yard, and he lost, I want to say, nine of them. But he was able to spray the horticulture spray on the other ones. And it saved them. They're living, they're thriving, they're doing good. He's happy. But man, leave comments. Let's communicate. It's social media. Let's be social. Let's talk about this stuff, all right? Ah, uh, man, I'm going to go get me a beer, I think. It's been a long couple of hours since I got my mail and the safari was in there. Good luck to you. I hope this works for me and I hope it works for you. We're all in this together. See ya. I just lost focus, attention deficit disorder, because there's one of the mylar balloons floating up there in the atmosphere at around 9,000 feet.